Okay, so this is the piece of turquoise that came from my collection from my father. And I was told if I start at 3,000 should be good. I am going to flat back this because look how flat that is and then freeform the rest. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so I am starting with 2,000. So we'll see what happens with 2,000. Let's go ahead and start. Oh, Dad, I love you. I respect you. And this is to honor you. Oh, it feels like it's grabbing, guys. Oh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, this is something I would definitely higher grit start with. Higher grit, for sure. So, I want you to see how... It is flattening it out, and this is a 2,000 grit. Usually 2,000 grit, like if you're working, uh, say, Jasper, it would polish it immediately. So one thing you should know is I, I don't know where this came from, and my dad does not remember either. Uh, but he did spend a lot of time in the Southwest hunting, so it could have really come from anywhere. Okay, so sometimes you just do what the stone wants to do. So I was going to do this flat back, but I think what I want to do is I just want to make this rounded over. Uh, one thing I do want to say is this has a very distinct smell coming off the water. Uh, it's weird. Okay, so I do want to point out some things. Um, turquoise a lot of times is identified by the... Um, things that are actually in it. So it's interesting to see this is a very green turquoise, almost like a varicoise. Okay, I got impatient. So off with the 1200, I'm going to put the, or off with the 2000, I'm going to put the two 1200 on and hopefully this eats it up a little bit faster because I just want to get my shaping done so I can really focus on getting a nice bright polish to it. So very easy, just switch out the blades, give it a good crunk tightening, turn it on, got water going, here we go. Oh yeah, you see that milky color coming off? That's it. That's it being ground away. That's a good sign. All right, recommend starting at 1200 because look at the shaping that I was able to get done and knock out some of the holes. Some of these holes are going to be very hard to get out. And when I go up to the next grit, I will definitely have to be very careful of these scratch marks, make sure they're all out okay. But looking good. Uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm just going in and I'm uh, trying to get rid of any sharp edges and rounding everything over. Okay, so it is starting to look really good. I've managed to get all the little divots, the little cracks out. So we are going to go from one I have here is the 1200 for the shaping, and we're going to put the 2000 back on real quick. Oh man, I was just gone and I left my water running. I hope I have enough water to get through this. So it's shaping up pretty good. Um, we'll do. We'll finish uh, polishing out the 1200 scratches and then we'll move on. One thing you always want to do is dry your stone off and look for scratches. You can see there is a few scratches up here that need to get taken out and a few over here. And then you can see these scratches right along the edge line there. We got to get those out. Um, and then uh, we'll move on to the next stage. Okay, so the great thing about this turquoise is that as it dries, like you can see these scratches. Now these are scratches that will not come out if I go to the next stage up. I really have to get those out. So let's get that one out. Okay, so I have gotten rid of all of the scratches except for this section. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in and get this done and then we'll move on to the next stage. One of the tricks, honestly, the trick to looking for scratches is to let your stone dry completely. So I was able to get most of them, but you can see there's still like a few faint ones and I gotta get those out too. All right, so we're at 2000 grit and we are starting to get some, some noticeable shine, 
the if you can see where the light is hitting it, that's where the scratches from this. Uh, you can see it's the scratches from this are much smaller and more fine. And so we're going to go to the next stage and we're going to take all those scratches out, those fine scratches, and it's going to start to polish. Okay, so we are on 3000 grit now, and we are just going in very carefully and removing all of the scratches from the last grit stage. I like to use the circular motion, but you don't have to. Okay, so if you spend a lot of time at the lower grits, you don't have to spend as much time in the higher grits. So we are already ready to move on to the next stage. So a big part of polishing stones um, is taking your time at the lower grit stages so that it's, it flows smoothly once you get to about 3000 grit. Now you can see that um, the scratches are gone. So we are gonna move from 3000 to the next stage. All right, so the next stage, we are gonna take a polish compound called Zam. It comes in a canister. I, I always store mine in mineral oil, just it helps keep it soft. You don't have to do that. It's, it's really just an extra step. So I'm gonna go inside and take uh, my Dremel to this, and then I will show you the final results. Okay, so the next step involves using my Dremel. I prefer using the Dremel Micro. This machine is very good. It takes a very fast charge and you can use it for up to a 30 minutes to an hour depending on what you're doing. Um, I do want you to take note of one thing and it's super duper 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 important. I want you to see, do you see how I didn't put the mandrel in all the way? That's because that's my hair. Keep your hair pulled back when you're using the Dremel. Okay, so I have the Easy Lock Mandrel and then I have a homemade polishing pad. Now, this is the Dremel back off of a sandpaper thing. You can buy the sandpaper discs, super duper cheap, and then take these off, carefully glue them around, don't get glue in the center, onto a thick, nice thick belt, belt style type piece of leather. You want to make sure when it gets wet it doesn't warp. So as long as when you get this weather wet and it stays flat that's okay. So then what I have on top here is a piece of muslin and then I have 50,000 grit on here. So I'm just gonna barely get that wet and then I'm gonna start polishing. Okay guys so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here I'm gonna turn it on and then I'm gonna turn it down. I want you to know if you're off level or you're not perfectly symmetrical, it will ruin your mandrel, okay? So you want to keep that in mind. Now, I'm going to take my stone, which you can see is already starting to develop a polish, okay? And then I'm just going to go in very lightly and I'm going to go over it, okay? Now I'll be right back after I do that. Okay, now because I shaped this with a flat lap, guys, it is going to look like there's little flat edges all around it. And there's no, pretty much no way around that. You have to be like a super amazing gifted flat lapper. I am not to that point yet. One day I will be. So let's go on to the next step is going to be the ZAM. Z-A-M. ZAM. Okay, so this is also on a homemade disc. Okay. And it's got some muslin on there that has some heavy duty strings. And the stuff inside there, that green stuff, that is the Zam. So I'm going to use this on high power because when you're polishing, you want high power except for opals. Okay, this is an, an opal. It could be veriquoise, it could be turquoise, or it could be verisite. I don't know because my dad collected it. So let's get started. Loud, crazy loud. Okay, I'm gonna get going on this. I'll be back in a minute. Y'all, I ain't kidding when I say you got to make sure your hair is pulled back. I don't even know if you can see this. Thankfully, the Dremel stopped on its own. Okay? 
You do not want this to happen to you. I promise it hurts like a mofo. Look at that. Pretty sure that's how dreadlocks are made. That is going to be fun getting out. Look at that. It is so wound so tight. Anyways, pull your hair back. Okay, so we made it through that, through the Zam. Now we're going to take another handmade uh, polishing pad. This one is, you know, same as before, the leather with the thing in the center. But I have attached a piece of suede to the top. There is no compound on the suede. It's just suede, and it is dry. Remember, dry. Okay, so I am finished polishing it. You can see that there are flat spots and that's not super attractive, but you know what? For someone who hardly ever gets a chance to polish anymore, you know, this makes me happy. This was a stone my dad collected probably on a hunting trip in his 20s to 30s with my grandparents. Um, so yeah, I this is a very special piece to me. You can see that it does have a pretty high polish um, if you can just ignore the steps from using the flat lap. Um, I really like this. Like I said, I don't know what it is. It could be a ver vericite, vericoise, or a turquoise, um, depending on where he was when he collected it. Now, um, if you enjoyed this video, definitely go to the subscribe button. Go to the <laughs> I can't talk. Go to the subscribe button. Um, probably gonna take me all night to get this out of my hair. <laughs> but uh, we do have a podcast that we um, encourage you to come watch. It's live every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Um, Mountain Standard Time, and then uh, 6 p.m. Pacific and 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we have a lot of fun, and we do giveaways and. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. We are also doing sales shows starting this season. So, uh, next week is our first sales show and that, <laughs> this is raw card. Um, and that show is going to be Tuesday at 7 PM on this channel. And we're going to get as much information out to you guys as we possibly can leading up to that. I really hope you enjoyed this and as much as as much as I did. I'm so glad it turned off before it yanked it out of my head because I've had that happen before with other equipment. Um, I never, I, pull your hair back. Have a great night or day. Okay. Love you guys.